And ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. We are, in New Zealand, a proud partner with UNICEF in the Pacific. And I know that not just from reports that I have read, but from what I have seen myself. We are incredibly lucky to come from a country where children can be children. We are free from war and the devastation that comes from long-term political instability. We have a beautiful environment, universal health care, and a world-class education system that encourages play. But we are not perfect. That is why when I came into office, somewhat surprisingly, I did so with a single-minded determination to improve the lives of children in New Zealand. We have had rates of growth in New Zealand that international commentators have remarked upon, commended, and yet at the same time, we have had some of the worst homelessness in the OECD. I do not consider that success. That's why we are working to change what success means. We have, for instance, created a tool called the Living Standards Framework. It puts the notion of sustainable intergenerational well-being at the centre of the different decision-making processes we have, policy advice, government expenditure, and the long-term management of our assets. Statistics New Zealand are developing an ambitious project called uh, the Indicators Aotearoa New Zealand. It creates a comprehensive set of indicators across the current and future well-being of New Zealand as it looks at economic, cultural, social and environmental measures. Now taken together, that is how we will measure the success and implementation of the SDGs. We might only be 4.5 million people, but we were the first country in the world to give women the right to vote 125 years ago. But all of these milestones all comes out of a sense of fairness, equality, care. We hate injustice. We don't especially believe in notions of status and we think everyone deserves decent opportunities and that starts with kids. We recently went out and surveyed children around what they wanted if we were to establish a strategy as a government and their response was really stark for me. They didn't list all of the technological devices that they want, they didn't say skate parks. They raised things like poverty. They raised wanting to spend more time with their parents and their family. They raised issues around poverty for other children. They looked beyond themselves, and that's what we should do as leaders and as a government too. Currently in New Zealand, Parliament is considering a piece of law that when pass will require us to set targets to reduce po child poverty and report every single budget on how we have done. We're hoping to at least halve child poverty in New Zealand within the next 10 years. We've changed our welfare and tax system so that lower middle income earners will end up being at least $75 a week better off and thousands of children will be lifted out of poverty. We've extended paid parental leave from 18 weeks to 26 weeks to allow kids time to bond with their families. We've set a goal that everyone should have a warm, dry, affordable home and kicked off a major house building program called Kiwi Build to help make that a reality alongside minimum standards for rentals so that children don't get sick or die from respiratory illness. We've made it free for any child under 14 to see the doctor. But despite all of this, we know there is much, much more to do. Today, this very day, marks one year ago that the election was held in New Zealand. That election ultimately brought me and my government into office, and I want to use this one year anniversary to recommit myself and our government to becoming the best place in the world to be a child.